Dr. Joe, welcome to the Keto Camp Podcast. Thanks so much for having me on. Thanks for being here. We're both fellow Floridians. You're in West Palm Beach. I'm in Miami Beach. We're about an hour and a half away or so. And uh, we're having the conversation virtually, but now that I'm thinking about it, we probably should have done it in person. Maybe round two we'll do in person. How about that? Totally. Kat? Yeah, round two at MedHouse would be phenomenal. We could do it, we could do it in the hyperbaric chamber. <laughs> That's impressive. Let's do that. I'm, yeah. I'm game for that. My question to you is this. How does somebody, a doctor who's conventionally trained, uh, you were trained as an orthopedist first, go from seeing the writing on the wall with conventional approaches to treating symptoms to going more functional and being more preventative. How was that transition for you? Yeah. So, I mean, it really just was after several years of just not really, not really seeing the outcomes that we would expect. Right. So, you know, my conventional training in orthopedics and the musculoskeletal system, right. We care about bones and joints. What do we care about systemic disease, right? You go to any orthopedic surgeon and they'll tell you the same thing. I, I work on the bones, right. But you know, there's a lot to be said about that because ultimately our long-term success depends on our overall health and wellness, right. And everything from diet to hormones to macro and micronutrient status, all those things affect how our body performs operationally, right? And so if we've got a, a joint issue or a bone issue, yet our body's healing capacity is impaired, how do we expect our bones to get better? And so my transition into functional and integrative medicine really came from just not seeing the best outcomes and understanding that we had to help people understand how to make themselves healthier so that way we could prevent that disease process from happening. And so I was always into kind of natural medicine and alternative medicine and a vitamin guy. And I was just like, you know, I can't continue to practice healthcare like this if I'm not really gonna be making a substantial impact to people. And so we started slowly integrating in, you know, um, you know, kind of more alternative based treatments in our orthopedic practice, things like PRP and, you know, that type of stuff. And it just kept going and going and going. And I started thinking to myself, well, why, you know, if we're preventing the need for surgery, why do I need to be doing it at all? Right. And so we really, I really transitioned myself after taking a residency program through the A4M, which I'm sure you're familiar with the American yeah. Academy of Anti-Aging Medicine. I did, I did their functional integrative medicine residency and I was like, I can't practice healthcare any other way. Mm. Yeah. So I'm curious to know, I love the transition and I respect it so much because some doctors who see the writing on the wall and see how they're just treating symptoms, there's a cognitive dissonance and they don't take the action to kind of seek alternative treatments or alternative health functional medicine. You did, but how was the transition? Like, did you get a lot of backlash from some of your conventional colleagues did people call you a quack like what were some do you take any arrows when you made that transition or are you still taking some of those arrows today i you just beat me to it so we still dodge those bullets today <laughs> i get uh not only do i get colleagues but i get random practitioners who call me and, and yell at me what am i doing what am i doing i'm taking you're you're taking this patient off their statin what are you doing you're gonna kill them Right. And, and obviously your audience and, and what you guys do in the keto world and from a dietary perspective, know how important, you know, nutrition is. Right. So I say, well, we're actually going to spend time and work with this patient on helping them live a healthier, better lifestyle. And we'll see if they still need that statin drug. So, yeah, yeah I mean, the transition in the early phases, this is also going back 10, 12 years. So it was also still a little bit not as well established. You know, our industry has come leaps and bounds, as you know, in five, 10 years. So I transitioned at a time where it was still very like unspoken kind of. Um, and so I caught a lot of flack for that. But, you know, unfortunately, still to this day, we're still, you know, contrarian and a lot of very key important medical parameters and areas. So we still catch a lot of that. But it ultimately boils down to education, right? The more that we can explain to our patients and consumers the more it makes sense when you really think about it. And it's just, you don't want to be practicing medicine any other way. Yeah, I love that. And that's my motto, education, not, not medication. And why not be proactive instead of reactive? Your book, Autonomy, which I want to talk about shortly, reminds me of an Einstein quote. Einstein said, intellectual solve problems, geniuses prevent them. And that's exactly what your book is. is the, every chapter is teaching you how to be 
a genius, how to be preventive, how to not be reactive and just chase symptoms. And of course, there's a time and place for conventional approaches. We thank God for that, you know, especially with like accidents and emergency room procedures. But that is not a lifestyle based uh, change. And you talked about the people calling you out. How dare you change people's lifestyle to get them off the medication? And it's unfortunate. That's just the name of the game. And whenever I lecture, I talk about root cause and versus symptom chasing. And I always give the analogy of somebody, let's say somebody went out last night and they had two pizzas, two whole pizzas. They had 50 dates, two cartons of ice cream, spaghetti and meatballs, some sauerkraut, and they just gorge themselves. So they wake up the next morning. Of course, they have a lot of symptoms. They have maybe acid reflux, some indigestion, they're constipated or the other way they're di they have diarrhea. So they make an appointment with their conventional doctor and they're explaining all their symptoms, one, two, three, 10 symptoms. And the doctor's listening. And the end of the consultation, the doctor's going to just say, okay, here are five prescriptions for an antacid, anti-flatulence. Let's just go on your way. But wouldn't it have been better if the doctor would have just said, like, what did you eat last night? Let's not do that again. That's essentially what your book entails. So let's talk a little bit more about the differences between chasing symptoms and what your book talks about getting to the cause. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, for us in, in, in the integrative and functional medicine world, that is our core philosophy, right, is we're not going to just sit there and address a symptom, right? We're going to try to figure out why. We're going to play detective and really try to understand how all of our organ systems interact with each other and how they all communicate with each other and really how they play a role with each other, right? Because I, I use the analogy in functional medicine is our bodies are these kinetic chains, right? And so you look at any chain, it's got, yes, it's got individual links in that chain, but all it takes is one link to be off and it throws off the entire chain. Our body biologically is no different than that, right? So, you, so one of the things that we talk about in my book is why the healthcare system fails and it's because of all these subspecialists, right? Nobody communicates with each other. Nobody. You ask the cardiologist what the endocrinologist is doing. You ask the GI doctor what the orthopedic is doing. Nobody knows. Nobody knows what that patient's doing, what medications they're taking, what they're doing. And that's the problem. And that's really what we focus in on in integrative medicine is connecting the dots helping people appreciate and understand how these organ systems integrate to each other, how these chemical reactions affect each other down the line, right? So that's really where we come into play. And as an integrative, you know, and, and functional medicine practice, that's what we specialize in, which is why people actually get educated when they come to us because they're understanding the physiology. And when you understand the science, you can't argue it. It's really straightforward when you understand the biology and the science, and that's what we really spend a lot of time doing. So to your, to your question, you know, we really look at root cause and really understanding where peace problems stem from, because when you can address the root and underlying cause, you're going to set yourself up for long-term success. So we're not, you know, we're not chasing that symptom. We're not chasing that disease. We're to your point earlier, we're trying to prevent that disease from even progressing. And that's really kind of what we do in functional medicine. And that's what we talk about in the book. Yeah. Yeah. I love, I love this conversation and it's right up my alley. Uh, and we've been brainwashed to believe as well, doc, that symptoms are evil. A diagnosis is evil and we should hate it. We should treat it. We should mask it up with a medication, a surgery, whatever it is, a shot. But this, the symptoms are essentially a gift from the innate intelligence, isn't it? It's, it's your body's check engine light. Shouldn't we pay attention to it? Like how many years has your check engine light been on? And thank God, there's a system to show you that the check engine and light is on. So what are your thoughts on that concept of the symptoms being actually a good thing from your body? Hey, Keto Camper, I want to interrupt the video real quick to share with you what I believe is one of the most important nutrients that we should be taking every single day. Most people are deficient in this nutrient, and it's responsible for over 400 enzymatic activities in your body. And your body just doesn't make it, so it's required to be taken in a high-quality supplement or from high quality foods. The problem with the food is that our soil is depleted and it's hard to get this quality nutrient. So what is this nutrient? It's called magnesium. But I'm gonna share something with you very fascinating. Check this out. Upgraded Formulas has this incredible product called Upgraded Magnesium. And Barton Scott, the developer of this product and company, he's a brilliant guy. He created nanoparticle magnesium, which has the ability 
to penetrate your membranes and go right into your cell. There's a 99.99 percentage absorption rate. Now, this is unheard of because with other magnesium products, you better believe it's not that high. And there's an interesting study they're doing with upgraded mag I want to share with you real quick. Early results from a sleep study with Dr. Sachin Patel showed that the average doctor in the group using this product has achieved an improvement of over 35% in deep sleep. More sleep studies and a double-blind controlled placebo study with upgraded magnesium is coming sooner. And you better believe those results are going to be super exciting. We already know this. Upgraded magnesium is easily the best supplement you can take for better sleep, including deep sleep, muscle aches, cramping, and any other signs of a magnesium deficiency, which is so common, unfortunately. What makes upgraded formulas unique, as I mentioned, is that it's a nanoparticle. This means it is absorbed very rapidly and efficiently by your blood cells. They produce a plasma-like version of minerals that the body recognizes and absorbs without digestion. And the results are phenomenal. I really believe just taking this for a couple of nights, you'll notice a big difference. So if you want to get upgraded formulas, upgraded mag, and any of their products. They also do some incredible hair mineral analysis tests to see your mineral imbalances and deficiencies, et cetera, and other incredible products that we've referenced before. Head over to upgradedformulas.com and use the coupon code KETOSIS to get 15% off your entire order. That is upgradedformulas.com. Coupon code is KETOSIS to get 15% off your entire order. I'm going to drop a link for you down below in the notes of this video. Okay, let's go back to this video. 100%. You nailed it. So generally when someone presents to us already dealing with some sort of symptom or a problem, we always explain to them, hey, you know, you're already coming into us at this moderate to severe disease state, right? It takes time for our bodies you know, cellular change to happen in a quantity sufficient enough for you to be tangible. And that's actually one of the reasons we talk about preventative health care and preventative measures. You know, a lot of the patients that come to see us in our clinics are young and healthy, and they come to us because they want to keep it that way, right? So it's all about prevention. And so to your point, when your body is already manifesting a symptom, that's because your body has already been down through this disease progression for so much, for so long. And that's really where we have to pay attention and be attuned. And we always tell people to be very observant and conscious of how their bodies feel, what their bodies are telling them. There's a, there is a line in some medical school curriculum somewhere that if you listen to the patient, they'll tell you their diagnosis. And one of the things that we've gotten away from in traditional healthcare is simply listening, right? In traditional medicine, what do you get? Five minutes of FaceTime, seven minutes if you're lucky right, of, of FaceTime, and that's if the practitioner is even looking at you. Chances are they're, right. they're lost in a computer screen or they're lost in a paper chart, right? Not even, they're hearing you, but they're not hearing you, right? So if you listen to that patient and what they're telling you, the diagnosis will come, right? But we've got away from that. And because of our system right now being just so, you know, inundated with quotas and volume and insurance dictating that you have to see 50 patients a day in order to earn a living, you can't spend more than five or seven minutes with someone. So you're not going to be able to listen to the patient. Hence, you're never going to be able to get to the root cause. Hence, you're never going to be able to make that patient feel and live their best. Yeah, this, you nailed that the system is what's, what's broken. I, I mean, these are well-intentioned doctors and practitioners who want their patients to be healthy, obviously, but the system they're in is flawed. Like, for example, you, uh, four years of medical school, what is the average of nutrition training in four years of medical school? So you literally, that's my line. You know, we've been doing a I lot know. of education piece. It's not even 10 hours in four years. That seems like... It's not true, but it actually is true. That, that is absurd. And let's face it, the nutrition advice they're giving you is old, old information. It's probably, you know, eat margarine or stay, you know, low fat, yeah. um, you know, consume a bunch of vegetable oils, which is pretty much the opposite of what we should be doing. So there's a lot of mixed messages. And the cool thing about conversations like this, we get to cut through all that noise. The, the benefit... I think of, of, of myself, I didn't go through a traditional sort of conventional approach when it comes to nutrition and health. So I didn't have to unlearn a lot of things. I'm just, I still have to unlearn and relearn things, but a lot of the majority of the things that you've been taught probably like in medical school and other practitioners that have transitioned to more of a 
alternative medicine. We need to learn that. And it reminds me of Alvin Toffler, who said that um, the illiterate of the 21st century are not those who could not read and write, but those who cannot learn, unlearn, and then relearn. Those, that's like the modern day illiterate. It's true. It's so true. And again, you know, one of the things that we get away from in traditional healthcare is just the education piece. If practitioners had an extra 15, 20 minutes to educate someone on why they're making that recommendation or why that lifestyle change makes sense, it would alleviate so much unnecessary trauma and drama that, you know, we probably would solve our own problems just from doing that. But again, our system is set up yeah. in one where there's quotas and, you know, parameters for us to practice practice medicine in when we're not doing medicine we're we're literally symptom managing yeah yeah absolutely i have a question on obesity uh, obesity is a symptom right being overweight is a symptom of poor metabolic health but there are different theories on what are the major contributors to obesity you know there's one theory that is, it's just genetics like if your parents were obese you know you got the genes and it's just bad luck there was a woman on 60 Minutes a couple months ago talking about that. And then there's also a theory that it's uh, seed oils, vegetable oils. You know, they correlate the amount of vegetable oils that have increased, correlates the amount of obesity in the United States. And then there's um, another hypothesis on the protein leverage hypothesis stating that people who are obese are trying to get their adequate protein and they're eating so much processed food just to get that protein requirement they need. And then there's another theory that it's more like mental stress. People are stress eating and eating excess calories. They're sedentary. So I think it's a combination of maybe all of that. But what do you think is the major con contribution to obesity? So I do also happen to agree. I think it's kind of contributions from each one of those different theories. Honestly, there's no doubt that there's genetic susceptibilities for certain things. But we also know that our nature can alter our nurture right? Or, or mm. vice versa, excuse me, right? We know that yeah. our living environment can alter our genetic predisposition. So you can't really use that as a scapegoat, right? Um, there are no doubt there are certain genetic vulnerabilities, but that's part of the equation. We know lifestyle. And unfortunately in America, you know, through digital marketing and marketing platforms and all these multimedia companies that brainwash people to live and follow a certain lifestyle that's unhealthy also plays a role. We know that as we age, physiology changes, right? So to your point on, you know, protein distribution, to your point on, you know, uh, neurotransmitter influence, to your point on hormonal influence, we know that as our bodies change, our biology changes, and that also plays a role. But how do you, but then you look at childhood obesity, right? Mm -hmm. So they haven't lived a whole adult life. They're not going through these biological changes, so to speak, right? Childhood obesity rates are the worst they've ever been, ever. So you may, you look at that component of obesity and you say, okay, well, it's got, it, you know, maybe genetics, okay, but maybe it has to be lifestyle, right? And so things that are in that child's life that are contributing to obesity at such an early age diet, nutrition, exercise, you know, those are the things that probably play the biggest role. And I think when it push comes to shove, obesity just falls back to unhealthy lifestyle. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I, I do think just focusing on the genetic component puts people in a, a victim sort of mindset and it, it doesn't help them get to the cause. And of course there's a genetic susceptibility, as you mentioned, but it's not the full picture, the environment, the epigenetic part. It's way probably more important. I do think it's more important than the actual genetics. It's the expression of the genes that we do have. And that's the decisions that we make on a day to day basis. So I'm not a fan of the whole victim mentality. It's just a lack of ownership. And I, you don't know my story, but I used to be obese for most of my life. And I had the victim mindset. I was not taking responsibility. So it does tar start with responsibility. And your book talks about that. It actually the subtitle is actually taking control of your health care in a broken system, which is the, the epitome of taking responsibility. So on the topic, Joe, of symptoms, one of the most common symptoms of the people that come into my world and my students, high blood pressure is one of them. So let's talk about that. What are the causes of high blood pressure? Yeah. So again, kind of in the same spotlight there is obesity. You know, blood pressure is a lifestyle disease, simply stated. 
you know, unless you're born with one kidney, unless you're born with, you know, vasculature issues genetically, you know, blood pressure is a lifestyle disease, simply stated, right? Cholesterol, you know, plaque production, um, lipoproteins, you know, oxidation of those lipoproteins, making your vascular walls not being able to contract, stiff, your blood gets thick, you can't pump, it's like pumping oil instead of water. Again, all manifested by lifestyle changes. So blood pressure is again, one of these things, you know, we know heart disease is the number one killer of people in, in America, um, ultimately comes back to just unhealthy choices and cumulative unhealthy choices. Um, and again, something so simple like making healthy nutrition choices, exercising, trying to minimize stress and sleeping well, all things that are in most people's control uh, yet they fail to execute, and that's why so many people have heart disease, blood pressure issues, etc. Yeah, yeah, well said. And that could be the same for like type 2 diabetes and all these other conditions, metabolic syndrome, essentially. It all, all boils down to the lifestyle decisions that they make. In your office, um, R3 Health, that's the name of your clinic, by the way? Yeah, so R3 Health is our integrative medicine clinic, and MedHouse is our membership-style biohacking center. Oh, cool. And they're both in West Palm Beach? Correct. Yep. Are you planning on uh, opening up more facilities? We are. Yes. In the next two oh, years. Cool. Yep. Florida primarily, or are you going to expand out of, outside of Florida? Outside of Florida. Yeah. So awesome. probably New York, Los Angeles, then probably Miami. Um, yeah. We're looking to open up, uh, you know, probably five to 10 clinics in the next few years. What are some of the things that you do at your clinic that, um, uh, people cannot find at other, let's say, like uh, at advanced clinics or functional clinics out there. What are some of the spe specific things that you do at your your spot? Yeah, so one of our kind of subspecialties has really been in the regenerative space. So we do a lot of work in the way of peptide therapies. You know, we do a lot of ozone. We do a lot of stem cell based therapies. Um, so really that regenerative piece. So if someone has presented to us with some sort of degenerative disease, and I'm not talking just musculoskeletally, I'm talking any chronic comorbidity. Uh, we want to put together, you know, individualized longevity programs that are going to help reverse that process and also work on prophylactic prevention. Um, and that's why we do see younger people in our offices because, you know, people want to continue to be their best and, and function their best and prevent that disease progression. So, you know, we specialize in a lot of regenerative stuff and, you know, we're really excited about our, our MedHouse aspect to what we do, our MedHouse clinic, which we just opened not even a year ago, but it's essentially a membership style wellness biohacking community. We've put together kind of a, an accoutrement of any tool and trick and hack that you could use to slow that aging process down and reverse it. So at MedHouse, we've got anything from cryo to cold plunge to infrared devices. We've got uh, sensory deprivation flotation tanks. We've got hard shell hyperbaric oxygen. We've got a lot of PEMF equipment. I mean, any tool that you would want or need to biohack your body, we've got it here. Um, and so that's why we're really excited about the future of, of healthcare because more of our types of clinics are really starting to pop up and people are understanding the importance of really preventative health care and inflammation management and just, you know, being optimal. You know, that's one of the things that traditional health care really also fails is, you know, reactive and, 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 you know, acceptable, right? Hey, you're within the reference range. That's a thousand points wide. You're good to go. no, it's about individualized healthcare optimization. We want people to be their best, live the highest quality of life for the longest period of time possible. Yeah, amen to that. MedHouse sounds like a like a biohacker's dream. I love all, all those uh, things that you mentioned. And it's not cheap, I know. Just uh, a hard shell hyperbaric oxygen machine is like over $100,000, right? It's, it's, it's insanely expensive just to buy that, yeah. right? Yeah. So that's yeah. awesome that you have that. Yeah. And it's cool that you have like, more of a membership based so if you're in West Palm Beach or if you're going to travel to West Palm Beach, go, go check them out. Well, uh, what's the website for that? So we are medhouse.co, M-E-D-H-O-U-S-E dot C-O. 
Same thing for R3 Health, r3health.co. And one of the nice things about practicing in functional medicine is we, um, you know, we can do a lot of stuff remote. So we actually service patients in 40, country, uh, 40 states in 10 different countries. So we work with people all over the place. Um, so, you know, distance isn't necessarily a barrier. People think, well, you know, I'm in rural Kansas, right? I can't get this kind of health care. I really believe in what you guys talk about, but where am I going to find that in Kansas? Not an excuse anymore. You know, if there's a will, there's a way. So, um, you know, we really want to help people understand their bodies and how they can be the best versions of themselves. I want to take a quick break from the video you're watching to share something with you that has made a big difference with my health and the thousands and thousands of students that I teach all across the world. Now, this is a unique device that has been shown to help with skin health, sore muscles, wrinkles, psoriasis, eczema, scoliosis, migraines, sleep issues, arthritis, acne, scar tissue, wound healing, relaxation, and also boost testosterone levels. What am I talking about? What is this miracle drug? Well, it's not a miracle drug. It's red light therapy. As you can see here, this is called photobiomodulation. And I use this red light therapy device every single day. Not only do I use it, my fiance uses it. Our dogs and cats love it. And the device I have here is from Bon Charge. Bon Charge has a different range of big panels, small panels from affordable to ones that are a little bit more money depending on how much you want. And I love this product. I feel so good. And it doesn't take a lot of time to get all these benefits. I simply take off my glasses, which is Bon Charge glasses, by the way, turn it on. And I have it running for 20 minutes once a day. And turn it on. And as you can see, I just leave it there on my desk as I work. 10, 20 minutes uh, per day will suffice. And it makes a big difference. You're going to notice a big improvement with your skin health and all the things we mentioned earlier in just a matter of weeks. So if you want to get your hands on this Bond Charge red light device or get their big panels, they also have panels that you could take on the go that are more affordable then head over to bondcharge.com slash ketocamp and use the coupon code ketocamp to get 15% off your red light device. Or as a matter of fact, your entire order, any product, you could get 15% off with that nice coupon code ketocamp. So whether it's these Bond Charge blue light blocking glasses, their sauna blanket, or any of their awesome products, use that coupon code ketocamp at checkout. We'll drop a link down below. Go check them out. They are awesome. And let's get back to today's video. Yeah, I love that. There you, there you go. With technology, there's no excuse. Uh, that's cool that you offer that. What are your thoughts on hormone replacement therapy, HRT? Uh, do you do a lot of that at your clinic? A lot. It's actually really how I built this practice is through hormone optimization. You know, so I th that's another area of healthcare that really kind of is very misconceived. Um, you know, a lot of a lot of hormone clinics or hormone factory mills, I call them, right? Just pumping people full of injectable testosterone and thinking everything's gonna be gravy. Um, hormones are probably the most intricate organ system, you know, our endocrine system, right? So it's all about balance, right? And that's for men and women. Um, so we're huge advocates of hormone optimization, but there's a right way, a wrong way, a safe way, an unsafe way. And unless you're doing it in a supervised fashion, you're gonna hurt yourself more than you're gonna help yourself. So hormone optimization is critical. It, it goes also ties into things that I'm sure you talk about, gut health and neurotransmitter health and all things that stem from, again, having really great lifestyle and nutrition all plays a huge role in hormone balance. So, you know, hormones are a key piece of longevity, uh, which is why we do our due diligence and try to help people optimize their hormones as well. Yeah, and you're right. I see a lot of people who just take let's say testosterone injections or hormone replacement therapy, and they don't really do the lifestyle changes, meaning they, their cells are still inflamed and those hormones need to actually get into the cell for them to actually feel better. So there's one, you know, you could take the hormone and see that it increased in the blood, but if it's not getting into your cells, you're, you're probably not going to get that desired effect, right? So do you, do you also focus on that? Like you teach them, we got to also make sure those hormones are communicating with those receptor sites as well. That's exactly right. And that's half the battle is it's not just pumping people full of hormones. It's understanding the communication piece. And again, like we spoke about earlier, the interaction, right? How about the influence of growth hormone on your pancreas and insulin, 
right? Growth hormone is insulin-like growth factor. So how about type 2 diabetics who have an, a non-existent IGF-1 level, mm. right? How about we improve your IGF-1 level so that your body can produce better, more effective insulin? I don't know. Sounds Makes sense to me, right? It makes sense to me, yeah. Right. So how about testosterone when it comes to lipid or cholesterol metabolism, right? Or insulin resistance, people with metabolic syndrome, right? Those people tend to be very sick. They tend to have a lot of inflammation. Inflammation forces our body to use hormones more aggressively, which means that unless you're supplementing, your levels are going to drop. So we see all the time people with, you know, major cortisol issues, people with major inflammation with their CRP levels, their testosterone, their growth hormone levels are in the toilet. That's because their body is just trying to keep pace with this inflammation race. And so their body is utilizing so much testosterone and growth hormone, they're not even able to keep pace. And so again, there's this incredible interaction and integration between hormones and, you know, lipids and sugars and all these types of things. So hormones are a really critical component to people being the best versions of themselves. Yeah, the human body is a, an incredible orchestra and these hormones are just the conductor sending them and connecting them and there's so many at different times, and you're right, when somebody's inflamed, uh, their, their hormones are being used at a rapid rate. Uh, and if they're just looking at standard reference ranges, again, to your point, such a broad range that's factoring in so many sick people. Most Americans are unhealthy, and we want to be in that functional lens, which is what you teach people. You teach them to look at that. Like On that topic, what are some of your favorite lab markers to test for? You mentioned HRS, CRP, but what are some of your go-tos? Yeah, so we like looking at, um, you know, inflammatory markers, right? Inflammation is really the causation of every single disease process that happens, right? So yeah. you have to really thoroughly understand, you know, inflammation. And that's from a systemic perspective. That's from an orthopedic perspective. So, you know, we like inflammation markers. So we'll look at HSCRP. We'll look at homocysteine. We'll look at cortisol and adrenal health. We'll look at a complete gamut of hormone levels, you know, all kinds of different things, really. Um, and then you, there's the, you know, the longevity side of things, like looking at telomere length and, you know, looking at, at those types of things, right? Really predictors of the aging process. So having data is great, um, but I'm also not data, you know, I'm not a data Nazi, right? Because you can look at a number on a test panel and it can translate nothing into functionality, Right. People mm -hmm. might operate at a certain level that may be abnormal on paper, but right for their body type. So, you know, you don't live or die by diagnostics. And I always tell that to yeah. people, but it is part of the equation. So, you know, we don't go crazy, crazy, crazy when it comes to diagnostics. But if it makes sense, then we have to look at it and getting to understand your body as thoroughly as we can also is very important to putting your best foot forward. Yeah, like you said, it's giving you some clues to the pieces, giving you pieces of the puzzle to pay attention to. You're not actually treating the lab work. It's just giving you some ideas. And then asking the person like questions of their lifestyle helps you kind of pinpoint that together. You mentioned uh, um, cortisol testing. What do you do for that? Is it, like a, is it a Dutch test? Is it a 24-hour urine test? What's your go-to for that? We Actually, we like them all. And to be honest mm -hmm. with you, we'll, we'll kind of rotate through them. Um, and sometimes we'll run all of them right? Um, you know, adrenal gland function is also a very complicated animal. And, you know, you could speak to three different experts and you'll get seven different answers, right? So um, we, don't, we don't fail to eliminate any of them. We look at all of the data. And again, how does that translate into functionality? And that's how we ultimately make our, our recommendations and our, our decisions. But, uh, you know, they're all so critical. And nowadays, especially post-COVID, People are stressed. People don't sleep well. You know, everyone's worrying about something. Everyone has, you know, a lot of people have gotten into unhealthy habits. Um, and so cortisol and adrenal health is also another big area of our of our medicine, for sure. Yeah, as it should be, for sure. You, you mentioned telomere testing. I know that in the past, there was a lot of um, value on just looking at telomeres to understand your cellular age versus your biological age. And then there was some arguments that we got to also look at methylation and some of the other things. So 
um, there was a company called Tilo Years that I remember testing many, many years ago. They kind of transitioned to more COVID testing. And then now there's a company uh, called DNH, which is looking at both the methylation of the cell and then the telomere length and kind of giving you an idea. So what is your go-to uh, test for actually looking at that cellular health, the cellular age? Yeah, so we we like uh, so all of those types of companies. I think are great. I think they put out great reports. I think they take it that next level. Because to your point, there are a lot of companies out there that just solely look at telomere length, but that doesn't necessarily depict the whole situation. So companies like that are great. Um, you know, we do a lot of uh, spectrocell testing here, which also is is a good one as far as integrating in some of these other epigenetic expressions, um, as well as lifestyle influence. So that's a great testing panel. Um, you know, again, I don't live or die by one test or one company per se, but, uh, you know, seeing how thing, all of that kind of gels together and kind of presents itself as far as telomere length or, you know, biological age, so to speak, that's a critical metric for us to be monitoring, you know, in the long run. Because our goal is to help reverse our cellular age, um, yeah. which you know is a multifaceted approach. But um, you know there are lots of diagnostics. But again, I don't live or die by anyone in particular. The ones that you mentioned, I have used very successfully, um, and they're great tools. What what uh, for you personally? Is there a certain Maybe there's not, but is there an age that you're aiming to, like uh, your lifespan? Do you want to live like to 100, 120? Like how long do you personally want to live to? Uh, yeah, that's a good question. So my answer to that is not quantitative, it's qualitative, mm -hmm. right? You know, if, if, if for whatever reason I don't live past 100, but yet I was doing everything I wanted to do on my 100th birthday, I'm a happy camper. You yeah. know, so again, it goes back to what we do in functional and integrative medicine is I don't care what the MRI report shows. Is your knee pain better? Are you able to play golf more? Are you able to recover from that tennis match better? That's my metric, right? Yeah. Yes, we have to live by some diagnostic or some quantitative, you know, measure, but I care about helping people be their best selves. And if that means less pain, better mobility, better athletic performance, better digestion. Those are my most important metrics. Those are things that hold the most weight when it comes to me. Well said. There's a difference between extending your life, lifespan, and actually health span. So I agree with you 100%. In, in your book, you talk about the pitfalls of people who use insurance uh, for healthcare. And it is a challenge because a lot of people want to get these testing done. Let's say I recommend to somebody to go get a CGM and I see the value of, of, of not just getting a CGM if you're diabetic, but to be proactive. And I use it as just data because I'm curious, but you know, insurance doesn't cover it. So you talk a lot about the pitfalls of insurance. Maybe you give some tips on how to work around that, some recommendations and suggestions to work with insurance and potentially just work out of insurance. Yeah. And unfortunately we're in this predicament because insurance really dictates how healthcare is, is driven. Unfortunately, one of the things that frustrates me the most about our failing system is the amount of time and effort that even me as a practice that doesn't necessarily take insurance, but I still have to waste countless hours of my day arguing with insurance companies about why I'm recommending something or why I wanna send someone for a thermography instead of a CT scan, or why I need to do this. You've got non-medical professionals in an insurance industry dictating how healthcare is delivered. Think about that for a second. Mind-boggling. Stupid. Stupid. Makes no sense, right? And even me as a functional medicine practitioner, I'm here trying to do the right thing and trying to get education out there and promote healthier habits and, even I have to deal with this nonsense, right? So imagine the mainstream, right? They don't know any better. So they just get used to having to deal with this nonsense. But, you know, unfortunately, um, if someone, and we want to try to utilize insurance, we understand that we're in the situation that we're in. So we have to utilize health care and health insurance for what we can. And so there are some things that we can use health insurance for, like blood testing, for example, Generally speaking, that's stuff that we can get by with insurance plans. Um, you know, so if you can find yourself a good functional medicine practitioner and they're doing business the right way, they should be able to help you utilize insurance for blood testing purposes for some things, not everything. 
Um, so that's kind of one of the red flags. That's actually one of the chapters in our book is, is how to identify a crook. <laughs> how to identify someone who's just taking advantage of people. And one of the ways is, you know, finding a clinician that's going to help you utilize your insurance for whatever you can. Um, so those are little things that you can kind of look out for. You know, uh, if you're looking at insurance plans and you're thinking about, hey, I want to pursue an avenue in functional medicine, look for a pro an insurance plan that's got out-of-network coverage. You know, sometimes um, some of what we do can be uh, covered by insurance if you've got good out-of-network programming. So that's one of the things that you can look for if you're, you know, you need traditional healthcare insurance, um, but that's an area that you really want to dissect a little bit. Um, but you know, I mean, it's, it's, it's a hard situation, right? Even myself, you know, I'm thankfully I'm 35, I'm healthy. I don't have any health issues, but I don't want to pay $700 a month for insurance. Mm -hmm. That's my premium. It's crazy. Mm. I, I don't crazy. smoke. I don't drink. I have no health issues. I don't take any medications, 700 bucks a month. So, and I don't, what am I going to use my health insurance for? It's a catastrophe plan. I have it in case, God forbid, I get into a car accident, mm -hmm. right? So one of the things we actually talk about with people is, hey, we understand the need for insurance because of that catastrophe, but you know, maybe get yourself a catastrophe plan and then invest the rest of your health budget into a functional medicine program, right? Be more yeah. proactive so that you're not even needing that insurance 10 years from now. Um, so thinking yeah. about things like that also are things that we put people on, on their radar. Yeah. And the way I look at it, it is health is not an expense. It's, it's an investment and there's a different mindset going into it saying, I got to pay, I need a budget or, or this is a health expense. Lab work is a health expense. This program going to your clinic is a health expense. All of those are investments and it's really the greatest investment you can make is it's in your health. I would have I would give all my money in the world just to be healthy. Like the, the billionaire would trade their life. Uh, I, I should say this over. The billionaire who's sick and unhealthy would trade their life with the person who's poor and healthy in a second. Because yeah. what is all that money if you don't have the health and vitality? So always, I always look at it as an, uh, an investment, not an expense. And I know you feel the same way based off of what you shared. Um, I have a question regarding conventional doctors like uh, family doctor or medical doctor who are seeing patients day in, day out in that broken system that you talk about, are there incentives for them to meet a certain quota every month and they get a bonus from big pharma insurance companies if they prescribe a certain amount of statins and, and different metrics? Are there, are there incentives for that right now? There absolutely is. And that's part of the reason our system has yet to change. So we actually incentivize practitioners for, for doing more consultations. We incentivize surgeons for doing more procedures. We incentivize hospitals for making more of X, Y, Z diagnoses. You know, this was big during COVID, right? COVID, there was this, these theories about COVID testing and COVID positives, right? Because these institutions get funding or get grants or get aid or get whatever because of their seeing so many COVID patients, right? Yeah. So this is a well-known, well-documented fact. Right. And so unfortunately, yeah, I have colleagues in the ER. I have colleagues in, you know, uh, in big inpatient institutions and they literally negotiate their contracts based off of their incentive program. Right. The, the family physician, the outpatient private practice solo practitioner is the most underpaid medical professional in the world. Think about that. The one that is the most important, right? The primary care, the quintessential primary care physician, right? The one who's supposed to be our quarterback on everything health related gets paid the most, the least. The Does least, that make yeah. sense? No. So that is just all levels of corruption. I mean, if the doctor knows that at the end of the month, if they write a certain amount of prescriptions for a statin or whatever medication, they're going to get an they're going to get a bonus. They're going to get paid money. That's what you're saying. The incentive they're going to get paid extra money, even if it's not conscious that they're going to be more likely to write a prescription instead of getting to the cause. Subconsciously, it's such a it's such a bias. And that does, how could you get somebody well if you're the incentive for you to support yourself and your family 
is to just write prescriptions. And that is the point of your book. I get that. But it's just so ridiculous. It's just insane. It, it's, it's really beyond comprehension. It literally takes away all ethical principles that were taught in medical school, like by far, you know, and that's just one component. Then you're talking about corruption and integration between, say, the insurance companies and big pharma, right? You've got, again, these monopolized pharmacies, right, that actually dictate what they cover on their formularies. So your practitioner might want to prescribe X, Y, and Z, but because your insurance plan requires you to go to a pharmacy and a pharmacy doesn't have that drug on your formulary, you're SOL. Otherwise, you're going to pay out of pocket. That's another example. It just goes to show you the integration and the corruption between FDA, DEA, Big Pharma, you know, a lot of these government institutions, they're deep-rooted deep rooted. Um, and so you just have to do your best to educate yourself and do your best to put yourself in the best health position so that you don't even have to worry about nonsense like this. Yeah, that is the best option to be proactive and not reactive. Um, question on your biohacks. You have all those tools. You mentioned cryotherapy, uh, HBOT. Um, I think you said infrared sauna. You have one of those as well. Yeah. Yeah. And PEMF, -E uh, what, what is your favorite uh, bio? I know that you love them all, but what is your number one favorite biohacking device and why? Yeah, great question. I think gun to my head, if I had to pick one thing that I feel is just best ROI for, for, for an individual, it's probably hyperbaric oxygen. Um, hyperbaric oxygen is one of the most critical components to just longevity and regeneration. So think about the concept. So we, the air that we breathe is about a third oxygen, right? There's nitrogen, there's all kinds of other gases. So when we can put you inside of a room that's not a third oxygen, but 99% oxygen, and then in that 99% oxygen, we pressurize it so that that oxygen has an easier time diffusing into your bloodstream, diffusing into your tissues. Think about how much of a healing process that, would, that can offer. And so hyperbaric oxygen is one of the most influential regenerative modalities because it really does a couple of different really key things. Activates and stimulates your stem cells, creates new blood vessels, so angiogenesis. And if your body can circulate better, your body's going to heal better. Um, it really reduces inflammation. Um, those three things alone are probably the basis of anything that's important to do with your body and your body's physiology. So if I had to pick one hack that I would say is the most return for people, it's hyperbaric oxygen. Yeah, pressurized oxygen. I mean, disease is a lack of oxygen, right? Oxygen deprivation, cancer, oxygen deprivation. That's Warburg's theory of cancer, and that's exactly right. So that's interesting. Yeah, HBOT is your go-to. I, I, I love HBOT. Um, do you tend to go to those HBOT conferences? I have some colleagues of mine that typically go to those. There was, They kind of go back and forth between East and West Coast, but have you been to those? Yeah, yeah, very good stuff. Yeah, awesome, awesome. Okay, last question for you as we land the plane. Um, we didn't talk about this yet, but it's one of my, it, it is my favorite. I'm going to call it a supplement in the world. It also mm -hmm. helps with uh, vasodilation, helps with lowering inflammation. It helps with uh, raising oxytocin, dopamine, helps you, your body go into a parasympathetic state. So vitamin G, I call it, and I call it vitamin G, and that is the practice of gratitude, Joe. And I love it so much because it's made such a huge difference for me. Um, and I call it a vitamin because it kind of acts like a vitamin. So the, I say all that to ask you the question, what are you grateful for the most right now? You know, honestly, I'm grateful that I was put in this position to just be able to help educate people, to really help make a difference for people. You know, I'm super happy for the life that I've given, that I've been given. You know, I've, I have a wonderful family. I have wonderful children, wonderful wife. I have a wonderful practice. Life really could not be any better. And I know nowadays, to your point, and I love that you do this. I'm going to steal this from you, by the way. Yeah, go um, for it. I totally am. Um, you know, nowadays it's nothing but negativity. And we talk about how powerful our minds are, right? Our minds affect our bodies. And those neurotransmitters affect our physiology and our mechanics. So if you wake up every day and you've got something to be happy for and grateful for, and you start that dopamine surge and you start that serotonin rush, 
You know, you're going to have a good day. And we talk about the power of the mind. And, you know, we see a lot of sick people, a lot of people with cancer, a lot of people with very bad diagnoses and prognoses. But if you can have that positive mindset, you can overconquer anything. So, uh, yeah, I love that you just did that. That just made my day. Um, and I'm very grateful for a lot of things. I love that. Yeah, that's a long list of things that you appreciate. And what you appreciate appreciates. It grows. And that is not woo-woo. That is a universal law, what you feed energy to expand. So why not feed energy to the things that you're grateful for? You'll get more things to be grateful for. You'll give your reticular activation, activating system more things that you're feeding to work for you so you see more things that are in your favor on the way versus um, in the way. So I love that. Uh, great explanation. Sounds like uh, everything is, I'm going to call you Mr. Wonderful. You got a lot of wonderful <laughs> things happening in your life. Where is the best place to get your book, Joe? Yeah, so uh, it's available on Amazon, also available directly on our website. So we mentioned earlier r3health.co. Uh, there's a direct landing page there. So feel free to read about us. You know, again, our website is not sales driven. We are education driven. So there's lots of great resources on our websites. Um, so definitely check us out. R3health.co, medhealth.co. Uh, what's, what's the best social media for you? Uh, at r3.health and at medhouse. There we go. Everybody go check out, go get the book, Autonomy. Go take ownership and responsibility and be proactive instead of reactive. Be what Einstein said, a genius, not just an intellectual, but actual genius. And uh, Joe, I'm grateful for you, man. I, I look forward to going up to your clinic and uh, doing some HBOT with you, having some dinner. We could double date. I'll bring my fiance. We'll have a good time. Right. But uh, thank you so much for writing the book and for your education. You're doing a lot of great things at only 35 years old. It's really, really impressive. So thanks so much again. No, and kudos to you too. Appreciate you and what you do and, and your performance and your audience. So keep at it. We're going to change this thing. We just got to keep at it. Amen. Thank you, brother.